Welcome, Joy, to Linear Rock. We have Hi. Joy Temples of Europe. Hello there, thank hello. you. Yeah, hello. Welcome back to Italy, actually. Yeah. Um, Europe is a special band for Italy, and Italy has always been a special place for Europe. Yes. Um, which are the best memories related to our country that you have in your heart? Oh, there's, there's so many. We've toured here ever since we started, well, ever since Final Countdown anyway. Those shows were amazing. I mean, uh, we, I remember in the beginning there, we had to, in the middle of the show, we had to stop playing because the audience were too loud. We felt like, like the Beatles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because we were just like, okay, let's just sit here, the drum riser, and listen to the beautiful singing. No, it, it's always been a great relationship between Italy and Sweden and also between Italian fans and Europe. So over the years, we have a lot of great shows. You know, um, this... Rome has been a good place for us too, and Milan, of course. But there's so many other cities as well we played in. Great fans in Italy, great fans. Um, which is the band that you are most proud to share the stage with today, if you know the bill? Actually, it's your second time in Italy with Whitesnake. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's great to play with Whitesnake again, because last time we, we, we had a great time with them, and I, I was up singing a song with, with David, I think. It was a surprise. We were standing side of the stage, and Doug Aldridge came. Oh, David wants to know if you come on and sing a song. I don't know. I, don't know. I was <laughs> standing there, sort of drinking a beer. And but in the end, I went out to sing a little bit on Still of the Night. It was great. Yeah. Um, Mr. Big also. We, we used to hang out with a bit in San Francisco because we had the same management oh. in San Francisco, and um, so we we know them a little bit. So that would be very it'd be exciting to see them. Um, so you're going we to met see Rob Halford as well. It was a long time oh, yeah. ago now, but it's a very nice. It's it's nice lineup tonight. You know, it'd be great to see some of those guys. And that's the good thing about festivals. You meet friends. Yeah, yeah it's great <laughs> to hang out backstage. And um, have a whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Since you very first started, music interest industry has changed dramatically. Uh, how this affected your musical direction after the reunion? Well, we, ju we just have to work harder on the website. It's very cool how close you are to the fans these days. We used to have a fan club in San Francisco or, or you know, other places that answered our letters and you never really got that close. Yeah. But these days with the internet and Europe, the band are common, the forum, we really, we know what the bands are thinking and we know how they feel and it's really cool. Uh, so that has changed a lot. Uh, we plan things a bit better because we have families at home, so the touring is a bit more planned. And we don't go out touring for one and a half year, you know, yeah. on a whim. But uh, it's great though because we're friends since we were teenagers, and we um, really appreciate this job now. You know, we don't take it for granted. You know, work hard and realize that we have the best job in the world. I, I actually have the best job in the world, being a frontman with the best musicians I know in a great band. It's a good, it's a good life. Uh, some people consider Europe today a very different band than Europe in the eighties. I mean, the period of your biggest success, um, almost another band actually. Uh, is that a compliment for you? I mean, that that means that you've grown a lot, or what, how do you do you take that? Well, I think we. The decision was in two thousand and three was to to uh, try to. Um, create something interesting again not just do a reunion tour or something so it's been it's been a journey for us to learn everything you know the craft and the studio how to mix how to master how to record better produce ourselves and the business side we're more in control of and everything so there's a lot of things that changed in the band but we're still five guys that have one soul and love to play together and we're lucky because we have great fans are you working on new songs while you're on the road, or it's difficult to do that? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes we work on the road. I like to separate it too, okay. um, but uh, you can come up with some ideas on the road. But we have two or three ideas for the next album, and it's very early yet, but we're going to the studio in October and release it uh, maybe April next year, something like that. And so it's non-stop for you from yeah. now and yeah, it's on. Been, <laughs> we've been touring a lot on Last Look at Eden. It's been the, the album that refuses to die. You know, it's <laughs> we've been touring one and a half year, and uh, 
It's great though. It's been the most important album since the final countdown for us. Last Ingredient has been very good to us. Connected with the, really connected with fans again and with the media as well. So there was the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin, and in the 80s Europe and Bon Jovi. Uh, did you ever think about touring with Bon Jovi and there's ever been a certain kind of competition between, between you guys, I mean, Europe and Bon Jovi, in a sense, or is just a press and fans thing? Uh, the press made a big deal out of it, I think, in Europe anyway. Um, but I, I've met maybe, I met John maybe three or four or five times maybe, and we get along fine. Okay. We, you know, talk about Thin Lizzy or something like that, you know, we we're pretty much the same age so we you know same influences and stuff like that but uh, no it's been it's been cool you know they they came around at the same time but you have to remember the flapper was they were around as well and, and they were sort of opening the flapper opened a lot of doors mm. when they started working with Matlang and, and it really inspired bands like us and Bon Jovi and everything because you saw what was possible I mean they were the flapper was sort of really uh a bit ahead of the other bands, you know. So um, they were important as well. And you opened a lot of door as well as Europe in Sweden, because yeah, you've sure. been the the greatest rock band out of Sweden. And uh, I mean, there wasn't, you know, a hard rock culture from your country maybe before Europe. So do you feel a big responsibility for that? Because it seems that now all the hottest band in the rock business comes out of Sweden, so how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's kind of flattering because a lot of bands come, come up to us now and it, it could be really heavy bands or uh, blues bands or whatever and they sort of come out now and say, well, you know, I used to listen to that, those first two Europe albums <laughs> and they sort of, it's, we've opened a lot of doors as a rock band because before us there were there were more pop bands that have reached out like ABBA and stuff but yeah. we were the first guitar based band and sort of made it possible and that's what it's about you know you look at another artist and you look at someone and you see that something is possible yeah. that makes you dream harder you know and then you go for you what you want you know? The opening notes to the final countdown uh, has become one of the most famous intros of all time. Uh, it's been used countless sporting events, um, movies as well, uh, and a lot of airplay uh, in classic radios all over the world. So it's the defi definitely a classic yeah. with capital letters. How does it feel for you and did your approach to the song change through the years since you know, it has become so successful and famous. Well, the funny thing with the final countdown is that it, to us it's an album track. <laughs> we have a different relationship to this song <laughs> than a lot of other people have. It, it's, it's, final countdown has meant a lot of different things to different people. But to us, it's an album track, it's uh, part of us, it was an important track for us. We wanted an opening track for our show, for our album, so... It has, we still have, we feel warm about it, you know, it's a great song to play live and I don't think we sing it in the shower or, you know, play it in the car or anything, but, and we don't have to rehearse it, but we do, uh, we do really love playing it live. It, it was meant for, the, for that, it's a great explosion and connection with the audience. You know? And you never cut it from the set list since it came out? No, never happened. We, on a prop, if we do a real show, a long show, we've always played it. But there's been maybe acoustic performances okay. and stuff, for shorter gigs. Maybe we haven't played it. Um, we were joking about it earlier. You know, what if we played our set too long and the promoter, or promoter came out and said, yeah. "Cut it." Yeah, but we got one more song, man. <laughs> That's that it. could be quite funny, though. We were thinking that would be. Let's try to do that because it will be. It'll be go down kind of a funny thing in history, I think. And does it give you still chills when the intro starts over? Or? Yeah, it always. Yeah. At that at that state of the sh stage of the show, at the end, I'm just another planet anyway, and that sort of just sends us off completely to another dimension, you know. Um. Do you ever miss Joy, your long blonde and curly hair, especially when you're on stage? 
for all those moves, rock moves, you know, never? Not, not really, I mean, <laughs> in those days I wanted to, to look like Robert Plant, it, you know, he was my hero and I think I did a pretty good job out of it, but it's more relaxed now, you know, we just turn up the amps and rock, you know. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, Joy, and hope Thank to you. see you again soon. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Joy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.